Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Calling All Devs, our weekly Q&A series where I take questions from you, the Star Citizen backer, and pose them directly to our Star Citizen developers, usually over Skype and usually at odd hours of the day to catch our schedules and whatnot. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, this week on the show, we have somebody new to Calling All Devs, a Calling All Devs newbie. First up, we've got Eld Eddie Hilditch, uh, lead environment art person. We'll find out what his title is when he answers the phone. Uh, Eddie! Eddie, how you doing, man? Hi there. How are we doing? I'm, I'm doing well. What is your title now, actually? Uh, I am Global Lead, which is uh, basically a fancy way of saying that I oversee the UK Environment Art Studio as well as the D um, Studio. Um, I have leads that um, work with me on that, but I basically gotcha. make sure the two the, the two studios are talking to each other and everything's gelling nicely together. Awesome. Well, thank you for being on the show. Welcome to Calling All Devs. So, uh, calling all devs, we take questions from our backers. The backers vote on the questions, and then uh, we uh, we post them to our developers. And for you, uh, I, have, I have kind of an interesting one, kind of a neat one. I don't, I don't know what you're going to say. I'm, I'm real curious to see how much we're going to get out of this one. Um, this person's question is about uh, Crusader. They want to know, how far along are we on Crusader? Have, 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 do we just have a big blob and that's it have, have we done a new work on orison uh what can you tell us about where we're at with crusader right now um i mean in terms i mean we're talking about two things right we're talking about crusader the gas giant mm -hmm. and we're talking about orison as the landing zone mm -hmm. um we have um an initial white box for orison um laid out that was just an initial sort of ideas passed to make sure oh maybe the shops here this is the medical area this could be the mall um an initial sort of flavor pass and, and layout pass for Orison. So we have that. Um, the bigger challenge, the much, much bigger challenge is Crusader itself as a gas giant. Um, it is um, very challenging from a technical <laughs> point of view to um, get a gas giant that works from orbit all the way down to essentially the surface when you have nothing concrete to put your feet on. Um, the graphics team are working currently on the gas cloud tech. Um, where Crusader comes from, it, it will probably be born from that tech. Um, we're not at a stage yet where we can um, create an entire planet with that tech, but um, it is coming at some point. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, I have personally, just as a little sort of experiment, taken some early gas cloud tech um, that, that they've been looking at on the Squadron 42 side of things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've put the white box horizon that we have and I've stuck it onto the side of Crusader just as a little test. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, even in that sort of rough state, you can see the potential of having this floating city, essentially. Like, And, it, and it's very nice to fly um, around with the gas clouds being all this sort of beautiful soft volumetrics and stuff it's it's very satisfying but um also incredibly rough right now so yes. we're not going to show any of that <laughs> yes of course uh, uh folk, folks can follow along with the rsi roadmap that's available on robertspaceengineers.com uh you'll notice that now that it goes out to quarter one 2019 uh, crusader is not on the roadmap yet uh it is still very early days uh in, in its development but uh it's a it's a it's a it's a planet that's uh maybe a little close to my heart with Cloud City and, and Lando and I'm, I'm dying, Eddie. Help me. We'll get in but, there. We'll get in there. We're <laughs> going to... We're going to achieve that dream. I have that. I have absolutely no doubt. All right, Eddie. Thank you so much. I'll let you get back to work, man. Pleasure. Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. Thank you so much, Eddie. Uh, moving uh, just a couple uh, rows down the office, uh, we are going to designer Johnny Jasivius in Manchester, United Kingdom. Johnny. How you doing, man? I'm great, thanks, Jared. How are you? I'm doing well. Now, I said a couple rows. Are you on the same floor as Eddie Hilditch, or are you on a different floor? I know we got like multiple floors. Do you, do you know where Eddie? I think is? I think I'm on a different floor now. Yeah, we're we're still at the top of the tower at the moment. I think they're down on floor one. Gotcha. Oh. We get moved around so much; it's really difficult to floor, keep track. Floor one, man. <laughs> floor one. Yeah. Do you guys have a floor zero? And I, that's that's a big bone yes. I have to pick with, with with you guys in the UK. Like you start with zero. Like Ground who, floor. Who in, Ground. <laughs> yes, but you've counted before, right? Let's count to ten. What's the first number you say? So you start at the bottom, and then you go one, two, yeah, three. Yeah, yes, no. When, but when you start <laughs> counting, when you start counting, you start with one. The first, the ground floor is the but, first floor. But the ground's ground the floor. starting point. Yeah, but and you start with one. 
<sighs> Count to ten. I didn't, I did, I didn't One. make the rules. These are just the rules I follow. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's a longstanding bone I have to pick with, 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 with Europe. It's not, it's not you guys. Was, uh, all right. Uh, it's that in English breakfast. Don't get me started. All right. I got a question for you, Johnny. I got a question for you, Johnny. No, I know. <laughs> I know. And I've touched it a lot. Uh, this is a question submitted by backers, voted on by backers. Uh, mm -hmm. It says, with Hurston having oceans, as they first saw at Gamescom uh, uh, 2017, what will be the first iteration of water interaction? Now, it might be a little soon. I think they're asking, are we going to have swimming? Are ships going to be able to fly around underwater? Uh, what's our thinking right now? So I guess I can kind of talk a little bit from the FPS side mm -hmm. or the kind of first person experience. Um, yes, uh, you will be able to swim eventually. So with the first iteration of Hurston, who knows if swimming will be ready by then. It's mm -hmm. a brand new locomotion set, which is obviously a lot of work for our guys. Uh, and at the moment, our kind of priorities are on um, improving our existing uh, animation set so we're actually doing a lot of work right right this second it's happening right now uh we're improving some of our animation sets and our, our locomotion feel and everything so um yeah a, a big priority at the moment is to improve the existing things we've got before we move on to things like swimming um so yeah like short answer is like yeah i guess we will eventually be able to swim but who knows who knows when that will be done it's definitely on our radar though yeah, I think it's fair to say that it's not something that's going to hold up the release of Hurston. Basically, I mean, it, it's right right now. It's a little too early to say where every where you know you've got multiple sprints going. Who's going to finish? Mm -hmm. Who's not going to finish? Whatnot? Uh, but we're not going to hold up Hurston if swimming isn't done and ready, kind of thing. So yep. basically, it remains to be seen. It's TBD. Put a pin in it. Uh, whether you'll be able to swim when Hurston is first introduced into Star Citizen, but. It's possible and yep. either way you'll eventually be able to do it for certain yeah okay. another answer is follow the public roadmap yep follow the public roadmap. <laughs> oh, thank you johnny you've gotten so good at this uh as far as the ship question <laughs> uh I, I will tell you that i talked i talked i talked to todd pappy uh, on the side and he said and he said don't talk to me about ships flying underwater right now so that's probably even farther back <laughs> yes that's, i think that's something that requires a bit more thought <laughs> I, I can say yes it's like swimming is something you can do yeah, ships flying underwater. I, yeah, I would definitely not yeah. want to talk about yet. Yeah, I think I think at this point, uh, uh, you guys know about as much as we do about how ships are going to function underwater at that point. All right, uh, thank you, Johnny. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you again so much. No problem. Thank All you right. for having me. All right, take care. See you, man. All right, thanks so much, Johnny Jasavius. Now we move uh, farther down the farther down the block there and go to Rob Johnson, lead gameplay programmer at a Foundry Forty Two UK. Uh, Rob. How you doing, man? Hi, Jared. I'm good. How are you? I'm, not, I'm, I'm well. Thank you for taking the time to take the call, man. Uh, anytime. I, th I, I think... Oh, don't, don't say that. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. <laughs> there, there are people that have been on this show and, like 10 times. Ask okay, John Crew. Any, anytime, once every six months. Then. There, there we go. <laughs> uh, so I got a question for you. This is submitted by the backers. This is voted on yeah. by the backers. Uh, your question says, I want to leave Port Olisar and never, ever return. Can we please get ship bed logouts working right? Right. Well, okay. Well, my answer to that would be um, you can potentially leave Port Olisar and uh, not respawn there firstly even without using the ship bed logouts uh -huh. because um, as we've got it set at the moment, you should be able to fly your ships to other landing, um, landing areas which have um, respawn um, uh, rooms for uh, players. Uh, such as like Grim Hex, for example, if you request a landing through the air traffic control and um, land correctly at those areas, then you should respawn at them. So potentially then if you don't like Olisar, you don't have to travel back there and resp respawn there. Mm -hmm. um, so firstly, you've got that mechanic um, to do that. Um, secondly, um, the bad logouts. Um, yeah, I do tend to get the bugs myself for, uh, for that feature. <laughs> um, through, yeah, We've been looking at um, a couple of the. Uh, we looked at a couple of bugs uh, for three one. So hopefully, it's a little bit better than it was when it first came in in three zero. Um, also put in the crash recovery system in yeah. three one, which is um, although not directly related to badge, hopefully sort of improves the respawn experience and um, persistent spawning as a feature as a whole. Um, 
So for three two, we will be looking at um, improving the feature further. Um, uh, I think we actually got a meeting today to discuss a little bit what um, what we may or may not look look at doing for that patch. Um, I mean, spawning as a whole is just is something that's kind of evolved over several of the patches. You know, I can remember back to when you were a criminal, you automatically got put in Grim Hex. So, so as to like when the feature is final, it'll probably to some extent always evolve over time because yeah. we're looking to give you guys the best experience yeah. possible when it comes to spawning. Um, so I guess watch this space for <laughs> further improvements. It is on the radar amongst many, many other things. But um, but yeah, it's certainly it's certainly something that we're looking to improve on. Yeah. Um, that, that's that's a good that's a good reminder, Rob. Uh, the, uh, every Star Citizen environment is a test environment, whether it's the uh, the Evocati or it's the PTU or even our live the live alpha environment, which is a testing environment. You're going to see these features continue to iterate, con continue to improve uh, each and every patch, and uh, you can do your part on the issue council. Uh, if if you're having a particular uh, issue with logging out on a, uh, uh, through the beds and whatnot, and you can reproduce it, uh, use the issue council. Let us know. Uh, uh, find other people's issue council issues and vote them up, confirm them up, help us identify these things and work on these things and make this better for everybody. So thank you, Rob. I'll let you get back to work, man. Thanks, Jared. Congratulations. Thank you Congratulations on your, on your first calling out devs. You did it. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right, thank you so much, Rob Johnson. Now moving back here to our Los Angeles studio, uh, we've got a call for Kirk Tomei, uh, lead technical designer here in Los Angeles. Kirk, how you doing, man? Hey, Jared. Good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Nobody ever Good. asks how Jared's doing. Why? I just, <laughs> no. Did I get That's the right lead technical designer? That's correct. Okay. I, I, if it's not how to pronounce names, it's what everybody's title is. I've gone through a number of titles myself. All right. So I got a question from you from the backers, voted on from the backers. It has to do with ship security, specifically uh, internal scanning. Uh, this, this backer wants to, and all the backers that voted on it want to know, will we ever be able to scan our ships for like internal life signs, like to see if there are any intruders aboard? Uh, okay, well, um, I can't answer that directly, uh, but I can talk about um, why perhaps you, you chose me to answer this question. So right now the, um, Vehicle Features team is working on scanning, um, specifically uh, radar scanning, ping, and um, and scanning for uh, the uh, items that you find via ping. So uh, the system we're working on is specifically for um, finding uh, surface mineable areas on planets and asteroids that, where you can gather resources for our future mining mechanic. Um, in that regard, you could be able to do uh, a ping that gives you back some vague info about like where potential targets may be. And then when, as you get closer to them, those targets resolve and then you could actually do a focus scan on those, uh, those targets that you pick up and then get back info. So you'll get stuff like, um, the, you know, these particular mineral deposits or like these metal deposits are here and are you interested in getting that? Uh, that will uh, become the basis for the overall system in which you could do things like you can scan ships and go, hey, what kind of ship is that? Uh, is it friendly? Uh, what manufacturer is it? Who owns it? Who's on it? So life forms uh, will be one thing that we'll eventually be able to get. Um, along with that, uh, I'm not sure if this particular team will be working on uh, a system for security for ships, but uh, if it does, uh, I think the future of security will involve something in which you could do like a self-scan and then you'll get back the same type of resolution for uh, info about uh, exactly what life forms are. So you can get back info about, um, uh, like if you do a really short one, perhaps you'll get info about uh, the number of life forms around it. Then as you continue scanning, you'll get info about uh, exactly who, uh, what you know, what the actual individuals are. And then you could go to the list and um, maybe compare it against the manifest and figure out, hey, there is a bad guy on the ship, but better, better send security down to get rid of them. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think from there, once we get that uh, mechanic established, we'll be able to do things like, um, you know, how do you thwart that system? Maybe you have some kind of stealthy armor, or um, you could disable uh, the internal scanner that's on the ship to make it impossible to do scanning, which would kind of like maybe give away that that uh, you are stowing away on the ship. But uh, you yeah, know, might be something that might uh, would be fun for players to be able to do by you know, something like hot wire a car 
in that case. Um, so um, to to make a, a shorter version of that, really long, I think what we'll do is uh, we'll uh, basically give you the ability to um, do the same type of um, the, like uh, manifest information resolution uh, on your own ship uh, that you would normally do from your ship to other targets, and then give you back some kind of info for that, so you can you can determine uh, whether you have something that's uh, on board that you may don't want. I just love scanning for life forms. Yeah. Life forms. Do, 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 do. You tiny little no from Star Trek Generations. No. All right. I'll oh, let you get back to it. Did data did? <laughs> yes. Sorry. Okay. Wait. I waited until you. I was like waiting for like seven minutes until you stopped talking to do that joke. I had. I, it's just all I was thinking about. I wasn't even listening to what you were saying. I was just saying, stop talking so I can do my life forms joke. No, I'm, just, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, thank you so much, Kirk. As always, you deliver far more than I ever ask of you, so I appreciate that. Sure, no problem. All right, I'll let you get back to work. Thank you. Bye. All right, bye. All right, thank you so much. And now, last but certainly not least, we go to Austin, Texas, and our very own Rob Reiniger, who's I got a question for him that I think uh, is. A lot of you are gonna are gonna are gonna be pleased with. Let's let's, let's see what he's got. Hey, what's up, Jared? What do you got for me? Hey, Rob. Uh, welcome back. Hey. Back, back. Seems um, to be a regular appearance here. Uh, yeah, you're you're not you're not our <laughs> most. You you you're climbing the ranks though. You're climbing the ranks. You, you you'll, you'll catch uh, John Crew uh, any any time now. All right. So for our last question of the show, we've got: Are there any short or medium term plans to put orbital markers above mm -hmm. major landing zones so that you can jump straight to the beginning of some standard approach rather than having to fly hundreds of kilometers. Yeah, so I've actually got an email. Uh, let me dig it up real quick that I can share because we're, we're proposing a couple different solutions uh, that we're exploring right now for mm -hmm. this. Um, so it kind of help explain. So this, this right here is kind of what we got at the moment where we've got our, our six, you know, cardinal direction um, exactly. nav points around a planet, right? So you have to go to one of these points and then conventional travel down to the surface, which is, you know, um, not always a short flight, right? So uh, one of the ideas is to have some sort of dynamically uh, generated mesh around the planet that would create uh, nav points, you know, like at, at these green dots here on the on the mesh mm -hmm. um where you could you know quantum travel to a point that's closer right so you, you quantum travel to a planet and then you could do another short hop once you're in the the sphere of influence of the planet down to a location that's closer um and and it, as you know as the planet scales up you, you can see on the right here like that the mesh would you know increase in density uh so that the the maximum, you know, distance down to any given point on a planet would be fairly consistent um, amount of flight time. But uh, another option that, that we've been kind of exploring is, you know, say say you've got Levski here, uh, and then you've got Levski's atmosphere, because you, you're not going to be able to quantum travel through atmosphere. That's a definite, right? Never going to happen, right? But uh, what we would do is we would uh, put the arrival radius of Levski up in into orbit so that um, as you are say on the far side of the planet you would be able to target Levski and then we would spline no. you know create a spline to the orbital you know intersection uh, above the atmosphere and then that that would allow you to uh, still have your angular approach you know descent down to the planet surface because um, that's something that you know we, we don't want to nose dive yeah. you know, down to the planet but um, but this is, this is, you know, some of the stuff that, uh, you know, we're kind of exploring here. So, um, we're definitely working on a, a few different solutions that, that, you know, we're, we're going to see which way CR wants to go on this, but, um, yeah, we, we've definitely got some stuff in progress cause we know it's a, it's an issue that, you know, nobody wants a 10 minute travel time <laughs> down to an outpost, but we thought it'd be really cool to be able to, you know, pick any, you know, it could, you also got to keep in mind that you're not going to know about every location on a planet. So we're still probably going to have, even if we have the spline, you know, solution, uh, we're still going to have to have the, like, the cardinal markers because you're going to need to scan for locations and, and, you know, you'll know about major cities, but, you know, you won't know about all the outposts. So you're still going to need to get around it to a certain degree and whether or not that's the orbital, you know, the, the cardinal markers or, 
some finer, you know, uh, distribution of, of nav points. Um, that's still kind of undecided at this point. But gotcha. Well, uh, that that sounds very cool. I, lo I love the idea of the spline thing. Um, I do want to reiterate, of course, that no decision has been made on this. Yeah. Uh, obviously, yeah. obviously, I, I saw the time step on the email. It's just a couple minutes ago when you said you you just you just got an email. That was this oh, morning. Yeah, this has been going back and forth <laughs> for you know uh, for a bit now. Yeah, yeah. like it, it's 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 in discussion, and we're 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 trying to pitch uh, a few different solutions, and it's just what we can fit. In, within the time that, that we've got for 3.2 here, because yeah. this is something that we definitely want to make better for 3.2. That's uh, quantum travel improvements in general is, is something that we're focused on right now. Gotcha. So uh, so for folks watching at home, I would say stay tuned uh, yeah. as we get closer and closer to the release of 3.2. We'll, we'll, we'll follow back up with Rob. We'll see, we'll see uh, which, uh, which, which path no pun intended. We we uh, intend to go on uh, whether it's one of the two we discussed today or whether it's a third option altogether. Uh, in, in fact, I, I think there's actually going to be a featurette at some point on on the quantum travel and the quantum linking, um, mm -hmm. and then some of the additional quantum travel improvements uh, somewhere towards you know the the three two release date. So I know I know that's what I was that's what I was saying. It's coming. That's what I was saying. It's coming. That's what I was saying. <laughs> All right, Rob, I'll let you get back to work. Right on, Take man. it easy, man. Take it easy, man. Take, Take care. It. Bye. See you. Well, that about wraps up this week's show. Special thanks to uh, uh, Eddie Hilditch and uh, Johnny Jasivius and Rob Johnson and Kirk Tomei. And finally, Rob Reiniger for taking the time to appear on the show with us. Remember, you can submit your questions for consideration each and every week up on the thread, up on Spectrum. Uh, and don't forget to vote. That's the two-pronged plan. I'm here every week. I say the same thing. you got to submit your questions. you got to vote your questions. And a special uh, note on that. If, if, you, if you're wondering, like, hey, I submitted a question and it got deleted, or I submitted a question and it got a lot of votes and it got deleted, uh, think about the content of that question. Remember the posting rules. One question per post. If you, if you ask, hey, what about about this and blah, 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 and how is this going to work? Also, what about this? And they're not related? You're accumulating votes for two different topics, and that's cheating. So that's why that, that's almost always why that post got deleted. So please follow the posting guides, guidelines. Please keep it to one question per post so that you, so that you can't skewer the votes among everybody else. So for Calling All Devs, I'm Content Manager for Global Video Production, Jared Huckabee. We'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.